You're listening to The Voice of Russia in Washington. I'm Kim Brown. On the heels of International Women's Day last week on March the 8th, Russia is celebrating its role of women in the Soviet Russian space program. It's been over 40 years since the first female cosmonaut took her very first journey into space. And to build on that history, this morning we're joined on the line with Kathleen Lewis. She is the curator of space history at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum here in Washington. Kathleen, good day. Thank you for speaking with us. Oh, good day for you, to you, too. It was June 16th, 1963, when Valentina Tarashkova, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, made her first journey into space as the first female Soviet cosmonaut. Can you give us some idea of how tremendously significant this was in the early 1960s? Well, this was very significant because at the time, uh, the space race, human space flight, was really thought as a an extension of the Cold War. So you had on both sides um, American, on the American side, you had um, test pilots, all, all male, of course, by necessity. And on, then on the Soviet side, you had um, fighter pilots um, who were all male in the, in the Air Forces. So it was a military um, program, and it was a male program. And here, um, seemingly out of nowhere, um, the Soviets launched a woman 50 years ago. And it was quite a surprise to the rest of the world who really weren't anticipating this, um, hadn't followed the signals. And it was a very significant because also within the United States, there was a discussion going on as to why only men were being recruited for the Mercury program and the astronaut program. And I would imagine during the tumultuous time of the 1960s, especially here in the United States, uh, where the the pro-feminist movement was gaining some traction, uh, given that we were in such a heated space race with the Soviets at the time, I'm sure there were lots of questions as to why there had not yet been a an American woman launched into space. Yes, and it was um, not very well known at the time, but there there had been American women who had gone through, um, not through official auspices, but through private auspices, some of the testing and training that the American Mercury astronauts had gone through. And these had been women um, largely who had flight experience from World War II, um, much like in the uh, Soviet case, women had been used to um, convoy, um, to deliver aircraft, um, within the territory, though in the Soviet case, obviously there were women fighter pilots as well. Um, but um, the uh, on the American side, it really just opened up. You know what happens to these women who have who are accomplished pilots in their own right, and why aren't they being considered um, for the space program when when they have already demonstrated their ability to fly under um, harsh circumstances. And the Russians have announced that they will indeed be sending uh, yet another female to to space. Obviously, there have been other Russian women uh, since uh, Valentina Tereshkova made her initial walk or her initial travels to space in 1963. But this this latest crop of Russian cosmonauts, starting with Yelena Serova, she's 36 years old. She's already a professional mm-hmm. cosmonaut and she's in the training program. Uh, wh- what do we know about her? Well, this is a, a, a what I think is a very good turn. Um, previously, there have been a number of recruitments for specifically female cosmonauts in the Soviet Union. Um, the there was an initial recruitment in nineteen in um, the early nineteen sixties for the group. There were five altogether who competed for what would become Tereshkova's spot. And then when the Americans announced the inclusion of women in the astronaut corps in 78, um, the Soviet response was to recruit specifically women's brigades for the program in, um, for the program and made a selection in 1980, of which um, Svetlana Savitskaya was one. Uh, but it, it really was came to no, um, there was no outcome as a result of that because, because these were specific recruitments, because the women... Um, in the Soviet Union and later Russia were included in specific women's brigades and not in 
incorporated into the overall program, they were often the first to be cut from the program. The projects were the first to be cut. So in this time, Sirova is part of the overall, she's one of, one of a, a larger group, I believe it's 10 um, in her class of recruitment, but at least um, she's part of the program. She's an engineer, which bodes very well for her ability to uh, to be selected and to fly, because in, in on the Russian side, the engineers um, tend to get the top spots for flying. Um, engineers seem to have uh, dominate where fighter pilots and test pilots have dominated in the United States. But overall, it, it's a very nice turn because like the American program since 1978, women and minorities have been incorporated in the overall recruitment, so you don't have a specific um, delegation of one or the other. So everyone is put into the same pool and they're allowed to compete for that 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 cherished spot for themselves with american lawmakers and obviously president obama battling over not only federal budgets but federal deficits uh the space program obviously the space shuttle program specifically was one of the major uh agencies whose budget was on the chopping block as a result we have been relying on um private space travel and also relying on the Russians to ferry supplies back and forth between Earth and the International Space Station. Do you think that the cutting back or the the trimming back of the NASA budget will impact uh, female recruitment and minority recruitment uh, for for astronauts adversely as, as opposed to what the Russians seem to be doing and that is continuing to put more resources into their space travel programs? Well, just to clarify, the shuttle program was concluded mainly because it it was a very expensive program and it wasn't sustainable um, with the um, option of developing the, the next mission. We, this shuttle was largely experimental. It's a very complex machine. Um, and for our long-term goals, it didn't fit the mission. So it wasn't that it was cut out of budgetary reasons. It was cut because we needed to go to the next stage. And NASA is developing the the, the next spacecraft that will, will go um, not only to lower Earth orbit to the International Space Station, but on to the moon and possibly to Mars. Um, and you you have to decide what you're going to, to cut for. The, the Russians are using the Soyuz, which is um, coming up on a, a – it's a 45-year-old spacecraft. Um, it's been obviously been redesigned and refitted, but they, too, are working on what the next generation um, – but they have had a lot of false starts because it's very difficult to operate one program and develop the next program at the same time. We've had periods of interregnums without spacecraft before, uh, between the end of the Apollo program, the Skylab program, and the, the first launch of the space shuttle in 1981 was most noted. Uh, but as far as the plans for recruitment and retention of women and minorities on the American side, I, d- I don't think that this will have any direct impact. Granted, the numbers will be smaller. There will be fewer people flying in space f- so long as we're dependent on the Soyuz until until the next um, the um, next generation spacecraft is deployed or a, a private spacecraft is, is certified for transport to the space shuttle, but they're still planning to keep the the International Space Station in orbit um, uh, through um, at least 2020, if not further. And there's still people who are um, enthusiastic. Um, NASA had a recent recruitment, and they had um, thousands of applicants for only a few uh, slots. So everyone still remains enthusiastic and wants to go in space. And as long as, uh, as long as they keep that program going, um, or when the next program starts, I, I think there will be very, um, there won't be any any lessening of of the recruitment of minority and women. That's Kathleen Lewis. She is the curator of space history at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, and we've been discussing 
uh, how this year will mark the 50th anniversary of the first women's trip to space uh, that was done by Russian Valentina Tereshkova in June of 1963. And the Russian Space Agency has announced that it will send another female cosmonaut into space for the first time in two decades next year. Kathleen, we do appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, and it was very nice talking to you.